You know, I think when I, I, I'm not sure Mutt Lang changed my approach to it, but Hysteria was definitely a record I used to listen to in the studio. As far as like sound, um, you know, uh, the, 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 how much bass and top end and things like that, I thought that was a really well produced record. It, when you listen to You Shook Me All Night Long, and if you go to Roy Thomas Baker's, you know, uh, I don't mind you come and hear that song about by the cars. Just, uh, just what I needed. And songs like that, you hear both producers doing some really interesting things that I used on the Daughtry record on um, uh, Feels Like Tonight. There are simple drum changes in those records, and Mutt did it with uh, You Shook Me All Night Long uh, with the vocals. That I See, I like really small changes like that, that when you get to the end of the song, a gift is done that l makes you listen all the way through. I call it a gift. And if you listen to all my records, after the bridge, there's a last chorus, but there's usually something else that happens. There's a gift. A chord change happens. A, um, a new part comes in. The drums change. So when You Shook Me All Night Long, he's got You Shook Me All Night Long. He's anticipating every vocal, but on the last chorus, he goes, You Shook Me All Night Long. So he hits it right on the beat. It's a long, small little thing, right? Boy, is it just genius. It's just genius because it rocks harder at the end because it's, everything's right on the beat. Roy Thomas Baker does that with uh, Just What I Needed where he reverses the drum part at the end. The drum parts are usually straightforward, but he does the drum parts backwards. He goes like, I don't mind you coming here instead of just like, I don't mind. So he does that, and you hear him hold back the song in the last verse, then all of a sudden the, the, the beat straightens out and it goes straight through. It's not a big change, but it's meaningful. So in Feels Like Tonight, I stole that idea. So it, this, the chorus starts off with the drums in like half time, and then when they're halfway through the chorus, the drums, boom, go straight forward. Even though nothing changes, the drums change, and you feel like the whole thing accelerated, even though it doesn't. The speed doesn't pick up. There's nothing, no tempo changes. It's just the way the drums are. Those are the kind of things to me that are really, really magical in rock production because you don't have to do very much. I think uh, in Three Days Grace, Neil, who's becoming a really great producer, you know, learned a few things from me with that. So what we do at the end of Three Days Grace songs, we'll take a chord change. Say we're going like D minor, B flat, C, and the vocal melody is over that. At the end, we might go B flat, D minor, C. We'll reverse the chords, we'll just chop it up. And all of a sudden the vocal melody still works because we're still in the same key and it just sounds different for a minute. And by the, the listener gets to the end and they go, oh, well, that's really cool. Like, I'm not sure what happened, but it's cool. You know, and then at the end, it just goes back out to the regular chord changes. So that's to me what makes great production is that kind of stuff. And I think Mutt was, I mean, Mutt did it on almost so many songs, his um, Def Leppard productions where he sings the background vocals and, I mean, he was different because Mutt's a really good singer. I'm not a great singer like Mutt, but Mutt could sing. He had a big advantage because he could sing all that shit. Like, the singer in Def Leppard's not that great, but Mutt's the singer. Mutt's like, <laughs> you know, come on. You know, you listen to the vocals. It's kind of him. So...